did you know that NASA was planning to land people on the moon in 2024? I did not know that. I did. Just reading about it on various websites. I did not. <laughs> Yes. Well, yeah. yeah, from five minutes ago when my mom told you that. I think about two years ago they talked about some of the Artemis missions and the moon return and all of that idea. So I've been keeping my ears out ever since. Before our son dies, maybe, mm -hmm. um, I have a hard time envisioning how we would travel those distances. You know, science fiction always uses these... Uh, cryogenic sleep chambers, and I don't know that that's realistic for human interstellar space travel. I don't think we would survive. Our technology would fail before we got to the next star system. If we are like researching about planets and everything, we might actually find a way to just finish global warming, like building another ozone layer or something. We might actually find, find, find that. I think humanity right now is in transition. And this is what my next book is about. So you had A. afarensis, and then you have this transition, and then you had Homo erectus, the handy, handy humans, tools. Their brains were bigger, but tools, they used tools for everything. They lived half a, uh, half a million years. Then there's another transition. And after this transition, you have Homo erectus. The brain doubles in size again. And now along with tools, they've got fire. They've got fire. And then you have another transition after Homo, Homo erectus goes a million years. Long time. Now there's a transition. And then what comes next is the next human. And in my next book, what I'm going to say is we're not quite there yet. We're just a transitionary, we're a transitionary human. We're still transitioning. And the next human's coming. What will you do on the way to Mars to keep yourself healthy? Um, I will eat delicious food. I will also keep exercising to keep my muscles strong enough. I think by necessity, we, pro we progress. It's part of our nature. We have to. We can't just stand still but at the same time I don't think we can keep going forward without like considering what's around us like so there's what there, you know another thing is we we're trying to go out into the solar system but we barely know what's under the sea if everything's clear over there and there's no uh, you know three billion year old ancient microbial frozen uh, cells good to go mine all you want you know uh, but to just kind of blanket statement, say we shouldn't go to the moon or we shouldn't go to Mars or we shouldn't expand beyond Earth because we're worried about bringing our biology with us. I don't, I don't buy that argument. I think, uh, I think there's some merit in, in looking and being careful while we go, but I definitely think we do go. If the technology was really as readily available as they portray it in the fictional media, um, somebody would have used it by now. And yes. Chemical weapons have been used in parts of the world since World War I, right? Mustard gas has been around for 100 years. So we have used these horrible weapons in the past, but they haven't been engineered bioweapons. They've been chemical in nature and not viral or bacterial in nature. But I really think if you start, even if, if we mess up some stuff, it's worth it because we have research and we might actually find uh, more aliens there. We might make interesting um, discoveries there, which would actually help us being human beings. That's a dangerous question. And there's the dangerous question of artificial intelligence. And so... It's a day, those, there's some danger, there's some great dangers in the future, and we want to make sure that we're doing what's best for us. Um, safety, health, and wellness, you know. We need to, we need to be very careful in the future with all this 
technology and then applied technology. Some people have speculated that if aliens ever come to our solar system and see this guy dry, you know, floating around the sun in that car, they'd be very confused. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they be like, what, what, what? Oh, no, I have to go back to my home. Because I don't have facts here. I can only use my imagination on that, on something like that. But, you know, maybe something, like you said, a city on the moon or something, but something that is closed off that isn't going to affect what's outside it. I mean, unfortunately, I see it. That could be a slippery slope also. You have one city on the moon. It doesn't take too long for people to overflow that and want to expand the city, expand, like, all over the surface. I mean, like, it's a black hole. It's it's so heavy, it sucks the light back into Cause like imagine, cause like it's just so heavy that time would be so fast there. So, <clears throat> at the wide scale coverage and kind of the the uniformity of the country focusing on that uh, set of missions, I don't know if that can come back again. So I don't doubt that we could go and come back, and I mean, half the world wouldn't even know. You have a good day. Thank you for interviewing me. Thank you. <laughs>